Wrapping cotangent. Cotangent. Hey, let's start with our mother function for cotangent. All right? All right. Now, you might forget. You might forget, man, what was cotangent? Because you confuse sometimes cotangent and tangent. You know those asymptotes, but you're not sure if you remember where they are. Okay, um, first of all, for tangent and uh, cotangent, what, what is the period for tangent and cotangent? Pi. It is pi. It goes from zero to pi. This is always true with tangent and cotangent. Okay, the next question is where are my asymptotes? Now, asymptotes is where the function is undefined. So, since we're talking about cotangent, we have to think to ourselves, self, what is on the denominator of cotangent when I write it as a quotient? And the answer is sine. Cotangent is cosine divided by sine, which is the same as x over y when you're thinking about the unit circle. So we're dividing by y. Where on your unit circle is y equal to 0? Right here at 0 and right here at pi. <coughs> See, at 0, the, the coordinates is, are 1, 0. And um, at pi, the coordinates are negative 1, 0. See, the y values are both 0. And we're, so wherever the y value is 0, that is where cotangent will be undefined. So I'm going to throw my, my asymptote right there. And I throw an asymptote right there because that's where it is undefined. Yes? Yes. Okay. And then you have to remember that cotangent does not go up. It goes down. And so <clears throat> we're going to start here at 1. Then we're going to go to midline. And go down to negative 1. And this is what cotangent curve looks like. That's your cotangent mother function. So how do we do a cheat graph for our friend, the cotangent? All right, let's do a cheat graph here. We're going to still do uh, our period length. So we got our x values in there. Oh, man, that's not split up right, but oh, well, We're, we'll live with that. We know that this is going to be the asymptote, and this is going to be the asymptote. And then we're going to go, oh, do I have to flip it? Is this negative? No, it's not negative. Okay, so I'm going to put a point right there, point right there, point right there. Okay, this is my cotangent mother function. And notice I did not label my x values or my y values because I want to do all my shifting and transforming first. Okay, um, oh, look at that B. He's trying to mess me up. I don't know what the H is because the B is inside. So we got to take that B out. <laughs> take that B out. <laughs> Nobody? Okay, fine. Never mind. Not funny. All right, so um, what do I get? What do I get? Minus. Okay, what is my new h going to be? If I took pi over 2 and I divided it by pi over 4, I don't know. That's like that's in my head. I'm like, oh, no, I don't know how to do that. Okay, pi over 2 times um, 4 over pi, right? Because dividing by something is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And so um, I cross cancel, get rid of those pi's. I get 4 over 2, which equals 2. Hey, some of you guys are right. Whoever said two. So our phase shift is two. Our B is power of four. Okay, now let's see if we can get our, our, our X values labeled right here. We know that we're shifting to the left two. I'm sorry, not to left, to the right. Because remember, we have to think the opposite. So if we're going to the right two, we're not going to start at zero. What are we going to start at? We're going to start at two. So that's two. Um, what's my period going to be? Hmm. Well, uh, uh, the normal period, right, was pi. And so I'm going to take pi and divide it by pi over 4. So we have pi, divide that by pi over 4, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's go pi times 4 over pi. And then uh, I make that into a fraction. The pi's cancel each other out because I love cross-canceling. We get 4. Hey, the period is 4. So if that period is 4, what's this number going to be? 6. Okay, and what am I going to count by? That one's too simple. What am I going to count these x values by to get the 6? The answer is 1. You just take the 4, the period, and divide it by 4 since we have 4 sections. And so this is going to be a 3, this is going to be a 4, this is going to be a 5. And then you have it. There's all my x values. Now let's look at my y values. Do we have a vertical shift? No, there is no k out here. The k would look like this. It would be like plus 5. And so you would go up five, but it's not there. So we have no vertical shift. So I'm going to leave this as zero. We are still on the x axis for our midline. Now, what is, um, what's this though? What's that going to be? And what's that going to be? Oh, there's a one half right here. So is that going to be a one just like over here? Nah, that's going to be a one half. 
negative one half. So we counted up one half and we counted down one half. Ah, all right, we got our cheat graph. Our cheat graph is done. Now let's see if we can transfer that over to our scaled graph. And right here, you probably cursed my name because you're like, Mr. Patey, why would you put the scale like this, you big jerk face? Yeah. Uh, hopefully I don't do that on the test. I'm sorry about that. Um, so I'm gonna put the regular numbers on here and I'm gonna approximate them, right? Right, okay, so if this is 3.14, three would probably be right here. Um, and this would be uh, 6.28, so that means uh, six is probably gonna be right here. So if I divide this up a little bit more, this would be in the three sections. Uh, this would be in the three sections. And I'm not gonna crowd it up by adding more numbers on there, but I think you guys get the picture. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna put my asymptotes on there first. Let's put an asymptote at two. And then we put another asymptote at six. Okay, and then we got um, something happening at four. We have a, an x-intercept. Uh, okay, there we go. And then we have uh, something happening at three and then five. Three, we're going up to one half. And then five, we're going down to one half, negative one half. And we're going to go, whoa. All right, let's uh, continue this on, shall we? We shall. Um, where's my next asymptote if I go over towards the left? Let's see, we counted, what, four? Yeah, that's right, four. So if we're at two, oh, we gotta put our negative stuff in, huh? Let's do a negative three right here. And we'll do a negative six right here. And we'll divide this up into nice, pretty equal, um, uh, yeah, there you go, that works. Okay, so uh, one, two, oh, dang it. One, two, three, four. So that's where my other asymptote is, right here at negative two. Mm -hmm. And let's do another one. One, two, one, two, three, four. We have one at negative six. All right, then we put our, our points. Uh, the middle point right here is at zero. And we're gonna go up to one half, down to negative one half, and we do our other line, yeah, yeah. And then we do another one. We go to the middle, and we go up one half and down one half. And we're gonna go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that was done. There's our pretty graph. All right. All right. First thing says, graph it. Done. Identify the period and phase shift. Hey, we already did that too. Oh my goodness, goodness. All right. That's um, four is our period. And what was our phase shift? It was positive two, right? We went right to. And then we, uh, oh, what's this? It says, find F of negative three. Let's go. Negative three is negative one half. Okay. So if we plugged in negative three, that's what we would have gotten. Uh, I just looked at my graph for that, but if you were weird and stuff, you could plug it into this X right here and find it that way. But um, I don't know, I, I like to do the easy way. F of three, let's see, F of three is right, is this, wait, that's three, right? Yeah, so that's positive one half. That one's done. Find all the X and Y intercepts, oh snap. Oh, look how nice those are. Look, they all cross really pretty points. Oh man, I hope, hopefully the, the test is really clean like that too. Uh, let's do our x-intercepts. Oh, and we're supposed to only answer from 0 to 2 pi. So we only care about this, these sections right here. So it, this is um, at 1x-intercept, 2x-intercept. So at 0 and what number is that? 4? That's 4. So at 0 and 4. So x-intercepts, 0, comma 4. Y-intercept is clearly only 0. All right, let's go over to our asymptotes just for the range um, from or the domain from zero to two pi so there's an asymptote right there that looks like a two i did isn't it zero and four oh see see uh one two three four no no it's right there i see where you're confused i i should have said this huh i should have said x equals and then this one's y equals yeah you guys down because you guys are reading this as a point. Okay, it's not a point. I'm just saying both of those numbers are x-intercepts. Now, going over to our asymptotes, we have x equals. My first asymptote is at dose. And my other asymptote is at six. Got six. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to think about this tangent. I got to take that b out. So, let's see. We got a tangent. That's going to be my b. And then I have a... No, not right there. I have an x minus... H plus blank, which is your K. All right, so 
I'm going to uh, keep the B out so I remember to multiply our H by the B and put it in so I get that correct. Um, let's look at, see, what is our midline going to be? It looks like we did not shift up. This looks like tangent, it does. Um, it, we didn't shift up, so I'm gonna put, uh, for my K, I'm gonna put zero. Zero for my K, because we did not shift up. Um, and then uh, I'm going to look at my period, because that one looks easy to find. If I go from negative two to two, what the heck is my period? It is four. Now that is not what B is. Remember, your period equals pi divided by b. Oh. And so if your period is 4, we put 4 right there, and then you have pi over b. you got to figure out what that b is going to be to get pho. And so I multiply both sides by b, I get 4. b equals pi, and then I divide both sides by pho, I get b equals pi divided by pho. So that means your b is pi divided by pho. All right, all right. Now, what the heck is my H going to be? Are we shifted? Did we move over? Hmm, I'm very confused. Aren't you? So to help us think about this, let's think about regular tangent. Okay, you guys know the parent function of tangent? The mother function. Okay, the mother function tangent um, has, ooh, it's not those asymptotes. Oh my goodness, I almost messed that up. Uh, right here in the middle. Oh, snap. Snappity wackity. So right here, we're going to go up. And right here, we're going to go down. No, is that right? No, we're going to go up. Is that right? Tangent always goes up. So this goes up like that, and this goes up like that. So this is our mother function for tangent. All right, so if I continue these curves, this would go like this, and this would go like this. But that's not our mother function. Um, I like to look at this as our mother function. It goes from 0 to pi, because that is the period of tangent. Okay, so now look at, look at that. Look at that. See my first point right here? It's at 0. Is that true here? No. It is moved over here. Oh, snap. Um, now, we know that the, <clears throat> the asymptote is right in the middle of these two points, the points on the midline. So we know that our asymptote for this guy is right here in the middle. So if our asymptote moved from this spot, like normally it's uh, at in the middle at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 it's now right here we can actually shift to the right or to the left we would get this answer right uh, but let's just look at this point right here on our midline this point moved to the right oh snap so what's that going to be what's our h going to be it's going to be two so if we put a two right here uh left or right doesn't matter uh, right because we can go two to the left or two to the right and we get to the same spot um what would this number be right here? Pi over 4 times 2 would be pi over 2. Very good. So we have pi over 2. And then uh, we have to consider uh, the satellite points. That's what I like to call them. Okay, now if uh, one asymptote is at 0, the other asymptote would be at 4. So our satellite points are going to be at 1 and 3. So if I go up, that's where my point would be. What would my A be? Three, right? Three? So I'm going to put three right here, which is the same as over here. I really only needed this to for the two part to make sure I multiply that out right. But those are all your answers for that dude. 